Let's practice a few examples where we find the slope between two points. So here we've got two points. We have a, an x, y point here, negative 3, 2, and another x, y point, 2, 12. And so the main thing to remember here is the formula for slope. We can't really do much without that. So hopefully we recall that m is usually the letter we, we use to represent slope, and it's equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. If that's something that you don't already have committed to memory, put it on a flashcard or do something to, so that you can memorize that formula. And basically what the y2 minus y1 is doing is telling you the rise, the, the y-axis rise between the two points. And the x2 minus x1 is telling you the horizontal run between those two points. And so one thing you might want to do, I'll, I have a lot of students that will do this, uh, just so that we're not confused about who's who, let's just label these. We'll label this x1, y1. Right, the first coordinate's x, the second coordinate's y, and then the second one is x2, y2, and then it's simply fill in the blank. So let, let's do that. So m would be y2 minus y1, so that's 12 minus 2, divided by x2 minus x1. Now notice we have minus a negative, and that's totally okay. That's, that's not a problem at all. The numerator 12 minus 2 gives us 10. And then, when, as you well know, when you have minus a negative, that's going to turn into a plus. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And so the slope is 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Now, we got kind of fortunate here. The slope doesn't always have to be an integer value, but, um, but in this case it was. So the slope, the amount of tilt between these two points, is positive 2. Now one thing that tells me because this answer is positive is that we must be going up from one point to another and, and not downwards. And sure enough if we do just a really rough sketch, I mean not, not, a, not a very detailed sketch at all, but negative 3, 2 is right about here and 2 comma 12 is right about here. And sure enough, yes, we are we are rising from left to right as we go from one point to another. So a slope of two sounds very reasonable. Now before I leave this example and go to the next one, let me make one last remark. Students will ask me a lot of times, does it matter which one is x1, y1, and which point is x2, y2? It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. For example, we could mark these out. I could call this first point here, I could call it x2, y2, and I can call the other one x1, y1, and you can do the math and check me on this, but if you do, again, rise over run, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, even though they seem backwards, it'll give you the same answer. It'll still give you two. The only thing you can't do is you can't call this x1 but this y2. And, and vice versa. You can't mix and match the ones and the twos. They're, they're either x1, y1, or they're x2, y2. But as long as you do that, it doesn't matter which point you list first. You'll get the same answer either way. Let's try another example. Negative 1, 4, and 1, negative 6. Let's find the slope between these two points. So m will equal, here let me jot these down, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Uh, we'd have negative 6 minus 4, that's y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, this will give us negative 10 over positive 2. Again, minus a negative makes a positive, 1 plus 1 makes 2. So this would give us a slope of negative 5. Negative 5 is a large negative number indicating, I'm guessing, the, the uh, line segment between these two points is probably very, very steep and downward facing from left to right. Let's, uh, let's, let's check it out. Let's do a rough, rough sketch. Again, nothing detailed at all. Negative 1, 4 might be right about here and one negative six is gonna be down here. 
And sure enough, look, look between those two points. That's a very steep negative slope because it's facing downwards from left to right. All right, we're trucking right along. Let's, let's do our last example here. All right, last one, the slope between 2, 7 and 2, negative 3. So M, our slope would be Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. I, I won't label them this time. And so in this case, we'd get negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10 divided by 2 minus 2, which is 0. Ugh, now that's weird. That, that's a strange answer. We can't divide by 0. So, so what does that mean? This tells us in plain English that this slope is undefined. So when you have zero over a number, you can have a slope of zero, that's fine, but you cannot divide by zero. So here, since we have division by zero, this has an undefined slope. Now, what in the world does that look like? Because maybe, maybe we're having trouble visualizing what that means exactly. Well, look here, if we have one, two, comma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, comma, negative one, two, three, then look at the line segment between these two points. It's completely vertical, and that, that doesn't make any sense as far as slope goes. You can have a slope of one, or a slope of two, or a slope of 10, or a slope of 100, but there is no run. And so even though there's a rise, because there's no run, there, this is an undefined slope because we have division by zero. So this happens from time to time. That's why I put this example in here, um, just, just so you can see an example like that. But anyways, hopefully those examples here, these three examples, help you understand a little bit better how to find the slope between two points.